Well, good morning again, Emmanuel Church. Good morning, internet family and friends. Thank you for joining us today on this Lord's Resurrection celebration. Praise God that this is, this is the foundation of Christianity. This is the foundation of why we believe our faith that Christ left the glories of heaven, took on human flesh as a baby, lived a perfect life, grew up just like we did, and yet he was sinless. He had no sin. He never sinned. The only human that ever did, because he's both God and human. Then he took our sin, your sin, my sin, all of our sin, billions of peoples of, of their sin to the cross, and he nailed it on the cross. And what do we have to do? We have to believe him. We have to believe the Father, that the Father sent Jesus to do that for us, to remove the wrath of God upon us because we've offended our God. We've disobeyed him. But he loves his creation. He loves us. He loves you. And he wants you to be in heaven with him. But we must put all of our faith, all of our trust in what Jesus did what not any man or a saint or, or any other person. No one else can forgive you of your sins. No one else can, uh, can save you from your sin. No one else can do that except for Jesus. He's the only one that can. And he's the only one the Father will accept. Amen? So, thank God that we have a God who loves us. So, Let's start out by a word of prayer. Father, we come before you, Lord, again, thanking you and praising you for sending your son, Jesus, to do for us what he did and is continuing to do to, ser to save us from ourselves, to save us from our sin. And we just pray, dear God, that we will be yielded vessels, that we will deny ourselves, deny our flesh, take up our cross and follow you and the power of your word through the power of the magnificent Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for loving us and caring for us. And we pray this and ask this in the wonderful name, the powerful name, the risen name. Whose name, church? In Jesus. in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, without Jesus' resurrection, can we be born again? Before we get to that, let's review last week. And that last week was, what is the meaning of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Well, we start out in Mark. If you look at your worksheet... You can follow along and fill in the blanks as we go. Mark eleven six 6 says, They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted to take the donkey. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their what? Garments. Garments, thank you, over it, and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God! Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming of kingdom of our ancestor David. Praise God in the highest. So we all have two, a twofold choice. We either reign with Christ or we reign with Satan. Each in their respective places of kingdom, of kingdoms. It's our choice. Now, to get this, to reign with Satan, we don't have to do anything but follow our own desires, our own fleshly desires, our own ambitions. However, to reign with God, we must make a conscious decision to believe him and follow Jesus and his word. Amen? So, the message summary of last week and the conclusion is, Jesus is not only the king of the Jews and Israel, he is the king of the universe. He will make an even greater triumphant entry into the entire world on his second coming. So it's up to us, his born-again believers, to point everyone we can to believe and trust in Jesus as their only hope of salvation and to open a pathway for the triumphal entry of Jesus into their hearts, into people's hearts, so that we can all enter with Jesus so that we can all enter with Jesus in the triumphal entry into the future eternal kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen, Ernest family and friends. 
Thank you for joining us today. So, that was a conclusion and sum summary of last week. Today's message, the Lord's Resurrection Sunday. Without Jesus' resurrection, can we be born again? Now, let's start out by explaining this prophecy. I'm going to read Isaiah 53. And Isaiah prophesied this picture of what was going to happen to Jesus 700 years before he came. 700 years before he came. So you can read along with me as we go through Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he has grown up from him as a tender plant. He grew up just like us. And as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, he wasn't strikingly beautiful. He was like us. He despised and he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He knows grief. It, well, he's going to know grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God, afflicted, thinking that God was against him. Isaiah 53, 5 goes on to say, But he was wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. It wasn't his, it was ours. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his gen generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. Isaiah 53, 9 goes on to say, And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. So he hung on the cross with, with, a thieves, with thieves on each side of him. But when, they, when he died, he was given a rich man's tomb. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, for he, was, for he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. Guess who his seed is? You and I who believe. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities, which is another word for sins. Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore, I will divide with him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for, for the transgressors. These verses in Isaiah, again, were prophesied 700 years before Jesus came to earth as a human baby. And these verses perfectly describe what happened to Jesus during Holy Week before he was crucified. Jesus died and was buried. But Matthew 28, 1 through 5 picks up. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to out to visit the what? Mm -hmm. Thank you, church. The tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like what? Lightning. Lightning. And his clothes, clothing was as white as snow. The guards saw this, and they shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. 
These big, huge, rough and tough Roman soldiers couldn't take it at the sight of the angel. So the faithful followers of Jesus, Mary and Mary Magdalene, were on their way to take care of Jesus' dead body. On their way, there was an earthquake. And it took place, adding great suspense to the anticipation as to what they were going to find at Jesus' tomb. During that time, the Marys were traveling. An angel came and had removed the stone for them so that they could see inside the empty tomb. Jesus is already gone. He had already gone. So how did he get out of the tomb? He had to have just walked through the walls of the tomb. How amazing our God is. The guards seeing the fantastic sight of the angels easily rolling away the stone threw him through them into so much shock they fainted into lifelessness. Matthew 28, 5 says, Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid. He said, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Amen? Amen. Just as he said what happened. Come see where his body was laying and now go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The angel knew why they were there, and he showed them the empty tomb. Then he encouraged them to go quickly to tell his disciples, and then for them to meet all of them to meet Jesus in Galilee. In 28, Matthew 28, 8, it goes on to say, the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but they were also filled with great joy. Can you, can you imagine that? And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, guess who met them? Jesus. Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him and they grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers, leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Thank you, Stacy. These women were very excited. They were pumped. And, and as they were running to tell his disciples, guess who met them on the way? Again, Jesus. And as soon as they saw him, they bowed at his feet to honor and worship him. After seeing Jesus alive, they were even more excited and more pumped. Jesus again gives them the same message to have his disciples meet him, meet him in Galilee. 28.11 goes on to say, And as the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest what had... Thank you, Jonathan. A meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. Sound familiar? <laughs> They told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while they were sleeping and they stole his body. They concocted a lie. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get into trouble. So the guards accepted the, thank you, Stacey, the bribe and said what they were told to say. The story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. Some of the guards who fainted at the sight of the angel when he rolled the stone away, when they awakened from their faintness, went and told the priest what had happened. The unbelieving, lying priest made up a false story that Jesus' disciples stole Jesus' body while they were sleeping and told the guards to lie also and they would give him a bribe to tell the lies. The false narrative that Jesus' body was stolen by his disciples was still being believed 20 to 35 years later, and probably even today as well. Our world, our world today, our world today has been lying and deceiving us by taking Jesus and the Bible out of our lives and out of our culture. Our cultures. They have taken the absolute truth of Scripture and completely abandoned its truth and kept it away from us. By this I mean when you hear a news program or, or a TV movie, let me ask this, rephrase this. By this, when have you heard on regular television 
a regular news program, a regular TV movie, that Jesus is alive. You won't hear it. That's not a Christian movie. When on a, on a TV movie have you heard that Jesus was the co-creator with the Heavenly Father who created the entire universe? You won't hear that either. When on TV have you ever heard of going to Jehovah Rapha, Rapha meaning he's the healer, and asking for his healing instead of taking this drug or that drug? So instead of giving us God's truth, they gave us lies. Because they do not want to believe the real truth, they feed us lies to try to take God's place. Now all of us today are unaware that we are being fed so many lies, the number of lies is incalculable. The lies are vast numbers in the mainstream media, government institutions, TV program, TV commercials, our health industry, our public schools, our public universities, as well as private universities, and the list goes on and on and on. It's the same motivator as it was in Jesus' day. Do we see what it is? It's the what? Power and money. Let me give you a few examples of these larger lies, then we'll get back to the great news of Jesus what, what he has done to set us free from this evil in the world. Amen? Line number one, if you wear your mask, stay six feet apart, close businesses and schools and churches, in three weeks the pandemic will end. This lie destroyed lives, our children's education, many businesses, many economies of the world. Just so, now get this, this is the reason I, I'm stating this, not just to be political, just so the elites could maintain the control pathway for globalism so Satan can eventually take over the world and claim he is God. Lie number two, if you get the COVID vaccine, you won't get COVID. The lie reaped billions, if not trillions of dollars for pharmaceutical companies which have already hijacked our healthcare system and the process have destroyed many people's lives with multiple side effects and death. The vaccine does not prevent COVID. Lie number three, they said ivermectin was not a good treatment for COVID. They said it was an animal drug. This, guess what? The CDC has just removed these false statements by retracting them because doctors who really care for their patients kept fighting the rogue system and scientifically proved ivermectin does cure COVID. And we know that by experience, Jeannie and I. All these types of lies today were being told in Jesus' day to prove he didn't rise from the dead. All for the same motivations of greed and power. First Timothy states it this way. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which have, some have strayed from their faith in their what? Thank you, Jonathan. Their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. We can see this happening today where money and power has become a God to many people. Amen. Well, let's get back to the great news. Matthew 28, 16. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. They worshiped him. But some of them doubted. They say that seeing is believing, but not every belief, not everyone, not every, but not every believer believes even if they have seen. However, those that did believe carried on the truth of Jesus' resurrection from the dead to the rest of the world. Jesus is the truth. Therefore, when we believe his word and the far-reaching truths of his word, they will greatly affect our present day lives with his goodness. Amen? Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came and told his disciples, after all that, he says, I have been given all what? Thank you, Brian and Stacy. All authority in heaven and in earth. Jesus has it all. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey the, all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. 
I am with you always, even to the end of the, thank you, Stacy, the age. What great comfort and relief it is to know that Jesus is the truth and that we can trust him for eternity and never, never, ever be deceived. Wow, what a blessing. 1 Peter 1.3 says this, Blessed, gratefully praised and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant and boundless mercy has caused us to be what? To be born again. That is to be reborn from above. Spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for whose purpose? His purpose. To an everlasting, ever-living hope and confident assurance through, through what? Thank you, Brother Fed. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We can be born again through the resurrection of Jesus Christ when we place all of our faith and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. Hallelujah. Do not put your faith in anyone but Jesus. Only Jesus can hear your prayers. Internet family and friends, please know this. Only Jesus can hear your prayers. Only Jesus can save you from your sins. No one else can. There's no forgiveness for sins unless you ask Jesus to forgive them. And here's what it means to be born again. 1 Peter 1, 4, 5 says this. To be born again into an inheritance which is imperishable beyond the reach of change. It's undefiled. It's unfading, reserved in heaven for you. God is keeping it for us. Who are protected and shielded by the what? What? The power, thank you, the power of God through your faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. Who's, who is our faith in? Jesus. Only Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jonathan. It is through the resurrection of Jesus that we have the opportunity to be born again. Now, I know personally, as many of you do, that I have, that we have been spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. So that even though we have not seen Jesus in his risen body physically, we see him risen in our hearts and minds through his transforming power within us. In Romans 8, 11, it says this, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in where? In you. He, ra he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And he dwells in you if you've invited him in. For as many as were led by the spirit of God, these are the sons and of course daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of the bondage again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. We are to stop living our fleshly desires, for our fleshly desires. We are to die to them. We are to live in and for God's spirit. 1 Peter 2.24 says this, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross willingly offering himself on it on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin become immune from the penalty of and power of sin and live for righteousness for by his wounds you who believe have been healed for you were continually wandering like sheep but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls amen church Amen, internet family and friends. Jesus is our alive and risen, risen shepherd of our souls. So without the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we cannot be born again. Thank God that he was resurrected from the dead. Amen? Amen. So the message summary and conclusion is this. The only way our lives as Christians can be completely filled is to be in the truth. 
To be the truth, we have to be connected to the truth. Jesus is that truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. We are to be in church regularly as the body of Christ. We are to hear God's word and be in Christian fellowship. And it is good for us to be in God's word every day at home, school, or office. And we should have an abundance of prayer in our daily lives. We should listen to good Christian music. And it is good to witness of the great things God has done for us and for the world by telling others. However, listen carefully. However, all these practices must lead to the most important practice of all, which is to be in intimate fellowship with Yahweh God himself. Well, we might think that all these things, all these practices above are being in intimate fellowship with Yahweh God. And they are close, but not quite. So what is the most important intimate practice? And here it is. We must learn to listen to the still, small, quiet, yet profoundly powerful voice of Yahweh God speaking to us personally. Amen? You can listen to all the Christian music. You can uh, read all kinds of scripture. But there, each and every day, there must be a time where you sit down with no distraction, no noise, and listen for the voice of God in your mind and heart. You must do that. I have to do that periodically, daily. We must turn down all the noise, all the distractions, and quietly listen to Yahweh God as we pray, listening for his response to all that we ask him, waiting patiently for his timing, that he may direct us in his will, not what we want, but his will. Then realizing, here's something we need to realize also, then realizing God's voice is not audible, but is a sixth sense picked up directions without sound through the Holy Spirit living in us. That's why we have to invite the Holy Spirit to live in us so that we can hear the voice of God internally beyond our five senses. When we hear God in an inaudible voice of our consciousness, we will hear him in an inaudible voice of our consciousness if we really, really seek him. So when we come into his presence in prayer, we, we, must, come, we must come in to his presence hot. You've heard that term before. Come on, I'm coming in hot. This means to come into his presence, H, humble with reverence and awe, knowing that God is far greater than you can even imagine. We come in with reverence and awe. It means to come in ready to obey, no matter what he asks you to do. This means to come in teachable, which is to let God transform you into the likeness of his son, Jesus, without persistent resistance. God, forgive me for my resistance. When we do this, we will engage the power of the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead and experience the resurrection power of Yahweh God in our lives. Amen? If you would like to put all your faith in Jesus and come in hot right now, would you raise your hand? Let's bow in prayer then. Father, we come before you, Lord, <clears throat> wanting to make sure that we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior and God and King, that we didn't just say a prayer, but that now we are making a commitment of our life to him for the rest of our lives. Jesus, please come into our hearts and minds. Forgive us of our sins. Change us. Transform us into the likeness of your Son. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayer that we pray through Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for sending the Lord Jesus to die on the cross and then 
raising him up from the dead so that we could be saved, that we could be born again. Thank you, Father, for loving us and caring for us. Please come into our heart and lives. Please change us and transform us into your likeness that we may know you and the power of your, that we may truly know you, not know just about you. They may truly know you, intimately know you, and that we may know you, the power of your resurrection, the mightiness of your resurrection within our own lives, and may we fellowship with your sufferings because we pray this and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. God bless you, internet family and friends. I hope you are encouraged. I hope you're challenged. And I hope that you walk closer with Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you.